Today's episode of The Dan Cave is brought to you by the CW's Black Lightning. Something shocking is coming to TV in 2018. Now, The Flash may have a cool lightning bolt on his chest, but he's hardly DC Comics' most electrifying superhero. No, that honor belongs to Jefferson Pierce, AKA Black Lightning, the first black character to headline a DC Comics title and one of the DCU's most underrated heroes. And now he's about to be the star of the newest addition to the DC television universe on The CW. But unfortunately for many people out there, Black Lightning has kind of flown under the radar. They want to know, who is he? Why should we care? Where can we get super suits like that? They look so sweet. Well, today in the Dan Cave, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Black Lightning. Now, before we get started, let me specify that this is Black Lightning's history according to the comics. The show's version won't necessarily be the exact same, but it's still an important and fascinating context for understanding this character. Created by Tony Isabella and Trevor Von Eden, Black Lightning is an icon of Bronze Age comics. First appearing in April 1977's Black Lightning No. 1, Black Lightning was created in direct response to the success of black superheroes like Luke Cage, Black Panther, and Black Goliath at DC's biggest rival, Marvel. DC should be thanking their lucky stars they went with Black Lightning, though, because their only other concept was one of the worst ideas in comic book history. A character named the Black Bomber, who was a white racist Vietnam vet whose exposure to to an Agent Orange-esque gas would transform him into a black superhero during times of great stress. Oh my god. Thankfully, Isabella had already been developing Black Lightning as an independent project which he brought to DC, which is to say, you are the real superhero here, Tony Isabella. Black Lightning is the alter ego of Jefferson Pierce, a young black man who grew up in the suicide slum, a bleakly named neighborhood of Metropolis that earned its nickname from the idea that the only way to escape it was to kill oneself. Wow. Dark. While he was born with metahuman abilities, he learned to control them at a young age with the help of Peter Gamby, an Italian tailor who became a close family friend after the shooting death of Jefferson's father. As a teenager, Jefferson excelled in sports, eventually going on to become an Olympic decathlon athlete. However, Jefferson wanted to give back to his community that was struggling with drugs, gangs, and violence by showing that everyone can get out of the so-called suicide slum if they want to. So after college, he returned to his hometown to become the principal of his alma mater, Garfield High School. Wonder if he met a Monday he liked. <laughs> Unfortunately, it proved difficult to help the students in the classroom because of the stranglehold that gangs like The Hundred had on town. And please note, this is not to be confused with another hit CW series, The Hundred, although that would be a really cool crossover and maybe a great future episode. To add further fuel to the fire, the gangs worked in conjunction with sleazy politicians like Tobias Whale to keep Suicide Slum awash in drugs and violence. Now, Jefferson was very vocally opposed to their influence on the school and kicked one of the drug dealers off of school grounds, shaming him and his cronies in the process. Now, in retaliation, the Hundred brutally murdered one of his students, Earl Clifford, and left his corpse on display in the school's gymnasium. You thought your pep rally was bad. Distraught over his student's death, Jefferson told Peter Gamby what happened, and his longtime friend suggested that he adopt a persona that would let him fight back against evil without bringing repercussions on those close to him. And Gamby took things one step further by making a specialized costume for Jefferson, who was born a metahuman. The suit was equipped with a force field belt that helped harness his innate powers of electrokinesis that lets him manipulate bioelectric currents in the human body, shoot lightning blasts, and much more. And thus, Black Lightning was born, named for both his powers and a paraphrased Milo Sweetman quote, Justice like lightning should ever appear to few men's ruin, but to all men's fear. With the powers of superhuman strength and the ability to bend electricity to his will, he began to fight back against Tobias Whale and the Hundred Gang. Now, in the early days, Jefferson used to don an Afro wig and use street slang while in his Black Lightning persona in an effort to prevent anyone from realizing he was actually a mild-mannered high school principal by day. And slowly but surely, Black Lightning began cleaning up the streets of Suicide Slum, putting a major dent in Tobias Whale and the Hundred's plants. While putting an end to Whale's reign of terror was a feather in Jefferson's cap, his quest for justice had one last tragedy. Peter Gamby sacrificed his life for Jefferson by leaping in front of a bullet intended to kill Black Lightning. This sacrifice was the final act in a life of penance for Gamby, as it turns out. During the battle, Black Lightning learned Peter's terrible secret. He had been the man who killed Jefferson's father and spent the rest of his life paying for it. 
After making a name for himself in Metropolis, Black Lightning was offered a spot on the Justice League, having impressed the likes of Batman, Superman, Black Canary, and Green Arrow, but he ultimately rejected the offer. However, everyone loves a good team-up book, so Jefferson Pierce eventually became a founding member of The Outsiders, a team of superheroes who weren't bound by the same do-gooder image and need to keep up appearances like the Justice League was. They were kind of this black ops group of superheroes able to take on jobs the Justice League simply could not for political reasons. And speaking of politics, when Jefferson Pierce hung up his costume for a time, he accepted the role of Secretary of Education of the United States, serving under none other than President Lex Luthor. Doesn't that sound better than what we have right now? While this shocked many of his former allies, Jefferson understood the value of the old adage, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But like many heroes, Jefferson could not resist the siren song of spandex for too long. And so he returned to his life of costumed vigilantism to fight evil wherever it may lurk. Although he initially rejected membership, Black Lightning did go on to become a pivotal member of the Justice League of America, helping fight villains like Amazo and Solomon Grundy, just to name a few. Fun fact, Black Lightning isn't the only super-powered member of his family. His two daughters, Anissa and Jennifer, who will also be featured on the TV show, both inherited electricity-based powers from their dad as well. Not only that, but they followed in their father's superheroic footsteps, too. Anissa adopted the identity of Thunder and fought with the Outsiders, while Jennifer joined the Justice Society as Lightning. And based on the trailers we've seen so far, the powers might even manifest themselves in the first season, but to what extent, only time will tell. And that is everything you need to know about Black Lightning, but tell me, what's your favorite Black Lightning story? What do you hope to see from the TV series? Let me know in the comments below and give me an electrifying thumbs up while you're there. Be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show about the story of an up-and-coming stockbroker who gets caught up in the world of insider trading and underground hand-to-hand -hand combat with elite pugilists from around the world in Wall Street Fighter. Until next time, keep on digging. Special thanks to the CW's Black Lightning for sponsoring today's show. One of DC Comics' greatest characters is finally coming to the small screen in a brand new TV series. Cress Williams stars as Jefferson Pierce, a high school principal who used to have a second job as a superhero. Now with his city in peril, he must come out of retirement to fight injustice as Black Lightning once more. Catch the series premiere on Tuesday, January 16th at 9, 8 central, only on The CW. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Orion Skymaster asks, where is that good chestnut? <laughs> you know, that old question. That's a great question indeed, Orion. The chestnuts will be back and in blossom once they're in season, but not every episode pairs well with their bold flavors and their musky tones, so I guess the real old chestnuts were the friends we made along the way. But tell me, where do you think that old chestnut is? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.